Gen2 Linux, a source-based Linux distribution that's been around since forever. Everyone talks about it being very hard to install, but I'm going to show you otherwise that it is rather easy to install. I'd like to also apologize in advance for how terrible the video quality is. The way I'm using the capture or my desktop is quite terrible. So, first thing you do is head to the downloads page, and you, there's multiple things. We will need these stage archives later. But what you want to do is download the minimal installation CD or the live GUI USB. If you're very confident in the command line, I recommend going with the minimal installation CD. Otherwise, do the live GUI USB. Also, if you have low internet, you want to choose, you should probably choose the minimal installation CD since GUI is five gigabytes. I'm going to choose the GUI today just because it's a little easier the partition with. And also, I can look up the documentation as I go along, since there's almost no reason why you shouldn't. So, go ahead, download it, and then use a program like Blina Etcher to flash USB, and then reboot your machine. There we go, and we've booted into the KDE live environment for the Gen 2 live ISO. Oh, what we want to do is let's open up Firefox. And it's connected. And let's go to the Gen 2 wiki. And go to the handbook. And choose AMD64. And then I believe we probably want this one. Since this is a EFI file, so we do want to do a, a GPT install. So we need the partition drive. So it has used F disk, but we're going to use the KDE partition manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. This here. Let's see, this is the old Windows install that is now going to be gone, so let's uh, delete this, delete that, and delete this. Now we have a new spot. I'm going to delete these later, but these are going to go first. Because I, I want to extract all the data off of them first. No, or make sure this this means that all you have to do is sacrifice the Windows partition, which is perfectly fine. So, what I'm do is do a new partition. I'm going to do this, so it needs to be a FAT32. FAT32. Let's call it boot. And 
size will be very easy to fit five six. Do that we have a new boot partition, then new. Let's do a swap partition. Do like swap. This thing is 32 gigabytes, so swap. Don't want to care about encrypting it. But this thing is going to be make this a nice swap partition. Let's do this. That should be 32 gigabytes. And okay. And then now we're going to diverge a little bit from the installer a little bit. So, make the swap a little bigger. Is uh, We're going to do this because... Now, the reason why we're choosing this for the swap space is because Ubuntu says you should do it for hibernate or sleep, or not hibernate, sleep, is you should have swap that equals the square root plus the amount of RAM you need, so... The dump all RAM in there, so this is just the extra to be safe. Then next, we need to create a root directory. It's going to be the Gen2 root. It's going to be 51200. And then I'm going to create another one of these for a very specific purpose. I'm going to call it arch root, and then this remaining amount will go ahead and call it home. I'll do butterfs because that should ensure that nothing goes wrong. So in case something goes wrong, we can revert back and we do it for all the roots. And I'll eventually do an arch install, but for now we're doing Gen 2. So. Goodbye, Windows. You're gone. Bye, uh, pending operation. Okay, and the reason why I made the, uh, why I'm doing separate, uh, root partitions is because if something goes wrong, it can easily hurt stuff. If root breaks, home doesn't break. Home breaks, root doesn't break, and then shared between Arch and Gen 2 because I don't want to complicate things too much. And then chose 50 gigabytes because I think that's about a good enough size for a separate partition. And as long as I clear the cache. But there we go, now that that's done. Continue the guide. This should all be done. Partitioning done. Partition. And so using ButterFS, we should need to make sure we have ButterFS enabled. Uh, okay, this is where we have to get into the terminal. I should probably close this now. Go ahead and do a... Let's see. A-G-I-R. But I think we should be fine. Okay, D-I-R. M-N-T. So let's begin to... Alright, um, interesting, mm -hmm. be right back. Okay, if you ever, the phone password is Gen2, however, I couldn't get to go into super user, so I just did this, and it worked. <laughs> so... Guess you just need to do that. Very weird, but 
it works. So now that we're in there, okay, so we need to create mounting things. However, we do need to download one of these, which is a stage archive. Now, all I'm going to choose is the desktop profile, open RC. But because it's all ready to go for a desktop user using OpenRC, not going to use System D, but you can if you want. But I don't really care. So I got that. So what we want to do now is we want to advocate B I R parents M N T Gen two, and then do a mount. Uh, LSBL, okay. So I want to mount NVME zero. I want actually, we should have that petition manager window. Let's see, I can use this to help on this one. And one B e three is that two slash MMT slash Gen two. Um, I on slash dev slash and there we go. And this should be, f I don't need to follow this. I'm going to quickly check the partition manager. Partition manager. Just to make sure I'm doing the right, just to make sure I'm doing the right thing. I don't want to be doing the wrong thing. Yep, I was doing the wrong thing. It's because the partition numbers are a bit weird. I wanted, uh... This one, actually. Oh, I did it right. Okay, and these, I need to make sure I don't uh, mess with these. So let's keep this around because I will need it again. And let's install the stage three because it's finished downloading. So we do want to set the date. This date. Oh, three. That's actually correct, so that's good. Then it's about how to choose which one. Whatever. So let's go to slash MNT slash Gen2. And now we just need to move this, move that to slash MMT slash Gen2. Then do an LS and have that. And luckily, because we're, now we can validate it. I am like to live life on the edge and not validate it. Let's check sums. So. We're just going to go ahead and unzip it. And there it goes. Alright, so that's uninstalled or installed. We can go. But, uh, let's see. Ooh, a Vim. So I need to mess with make.com first. I'm going to do something to see. Uh, in BI to Gen2 to uh, bin. Because 
things I do, and let's do bi uh, slash mnt slash gen2 slash etsy slash portage make dot conf and some flags. First flag we want to set is want to set the march native, which means it'll optimize for our CPU architecture, which in this case is an AMD. And two, oh yeah, we want to set makeups. Which I'll put you down here. Make, make ops and let's do this J since this is a 32 bit pro 32 thread processor 16 cores I think I can get away with that hopefully it doesn't crash and I have plenty of RAM to use for it and then Oh, that it's right quit installing a system Let's do a loop. Luckily, you just copy and paste these into the command line. Go select our mirrors. About the United States mirrors. Say select all of these. I have no idea how close these are to where I am, but no idea, but. I'll rather choose ones that may or may not be as good if it means that they'll be good in the future. Go to OK. The terminal zone are clear. Run this command. Select that. And then we copy this. Oh. And then I just want us to make sure that this looks good. There, it looks pretty good, I believe. So, do that. Let's do a CP. D. Why am I typing this out? I can just copy it. So I'll just copy that. Then we need to just run all these commands. Then now we're going to enter into this installation media. In this, so we're going to sure root. So we're now in the installation media and then get yeah, our configuration. We're going to source it on the profile and then to make sure that we know where we are, we're going to do this. So now it tells us, hey, we're still in the, we're in live CD, but we're sure rooting. And now we want to mount dev slash. NVM, NVM, E, zero, and one, what we want, because that's boot, P1, like this. There we go, and that worked. Now I want to do the merge, web, sync, and then let's do that. There we go, that's not done. Uh, we could read the news, but we're not going to do that. 
But we are going to do an E select profile list. And we want to use profile number five, which is the desktop stable. It's also experimental, but I can change that later. So I'm just going to keep stable on for now. So that's already set. Now I need to update this. Let's see if it needs to be emerged. Um, sure, let's emerge it. There we go, we've updated the emerge. And we can look at use variables, which are used to customize your dentistry system to be the way you want them to be. This allows you to see all of them. If you want to look at all the descriptions of use variables, you would use this command. Explain so. You absolutely want to cut down on bloat. You should definitely look through your figure out what you do and don't need and get rid of it. However, I'm going to use the default use variables, which were what this command outputted. So, it should be fine for now. Okay, we're going to deal with this later because we are only doing a base install. I'll do a GUI install video later. License variable. Do you want to do so? C slide. Portage. Make that bump. You can figure what uh, software you'd want to install if you want free software. What I'm going to do is, I think, let's do Linux at license equals star, which means it'll accept all licenses. Let's get that time zone. Let's USR slash share zone. Well, is all of the zones or not, but what we want to do is do an echo America. Into Etsy slash time zone. And then we want to emerge this. Cal. Um, let's see. Al. Jen. That's what I thought. Forgot about that. Uh, Cal's. Read these two. Let's also do that. Do a little Cal. Jen. That generates locales. Then let's do e select locale list. Not to do e select locale set. I uh, set it to six, which is US UTF eight. There we go. And then we want to run this command, which because we want to change the profile and update the variable, but by doing that, it'll also mess up our true prompt. So there you go, it's all nice and fixed. Next. Let's merge this. Okay, that's done. There's multiple ways to deal with the kernel for Gen 2. You can compile it, which is, oh, there's two. You can compile it or you can download a pre-compiled kernel, which that's nice. But uh, we're going to compile our own kernel because I don't think it's going to take that long on this machine. And there's two ways of doing that. Is you could mainly choose what you need in your kernel, which you should if you're going for absolutely minimal. You gen you want to do that is let's do an e so select kernel list 
And, well, we only have one kernel, so let's select it as the one we want. However, we need use gen kernel because I am lazy and I want to get this done and over with. And it'll be much faster, so I'm just gonna use gen kernel. There we go. What we want to do is edit the Fs tab or Fs tab. And I want to change this. Dev slash nvm. Vme 0 n 1p1. One, I believe is what we want. In 1p1 to this. And then we'll come back to this file later. But then let's do a gen kern. Uh, all, which will pretty much make a, a a kernel that contains everything, which is kind of unfortunate, but I believe my machine is powerful enough that it shouldn't take too long of a process to install, or compile rather. There we go, we're all done with that. Then, let's do... This and that should be good. Skipped in the past and worked perfectly fine, so I'll just skip that. Hopefully, it doesn't break. FS tab. Alright, so we're gonna. This is a magical thing. This is what mounts your file system. This. Let's change this. Yes. Then let's do slash dev slash nv e Ah, I did a mistake. Oops. Well, that's bad. <laughs> um yeah, that's definitely a mistake. Um Hopefully I didn't uh nuke something. Uh I might run gen kernel again <laughs> just to be safe. It only took like ten minutes I think. It's partition three P three that Um, I think properties swap. There we go. That like that. Yeah, that should be fine. So like swap will go. Let's right. Let's quit. And let's do another gen kernel. <laughs> they screwed up. Oh, well, that happens. We can actually, uh, new window. And a vi c slash fs tab. Okay. Because we're over here and well, n one p. Let's see, where's home? Partition 10. 10. And let's go and that mount point will be slash home. And it is butter fs. Let's do Noah time. And then let's see. Let's just make that zero. There, so that should mount home there. Hopefully. I think. I'm not sure. Let's just continue. DI. Let's see if I want. 
e host name host name gen two yes yes top um domain name set PHCP PHCP then start RC, uh, let's run RC, run this, which is RC update, and at, at DHCP default, which means that it'll add it as a service that'll be run and add it as deep, the run level default, which I believe is just starts up. And then RC service DHCP start just tells that service to start. So now it can connect to the internet. Post file. Don't think I need to mess with this. Now we need to set a root password. Now, one really annoying thing about Gen 2 is it requires you to use a strong password. I don't like that, but it's just something I have to live with. There we go. It's a much more complicated password. Key maps, don't need to mess with that. And touch any of this. Let's go next. And let's use this the logger. Please. Let's go file. And then we're gonna add it as run level default. Let's add cron because I will be using this. Crony will be installed. Let's add to add it and don't need to do that. Let's, I do want uh, file indexing. Let's please. Now I don't care about any SSH, so don't need that time synchronization. I'm gonna install this just just in case. You never know. I won't add it to the run level default. See, yeah, butter FS. Let's do a merge boss FS tools. It's this by FS, FS progs. I think that's all I need. Oh, I see what I did. Do I like the merges? Yes, please. Let's merge this just in case so I don't forget. Just in case, I never know, I might use it, might not need it, but who knows. I'll rather just keep it just in case. Bootloader. Then since we're using Fi, we want to add this to our rate.conf. And then merge grub. Yes, please. Okay, so then we want to run this command here. That should okay. That okay. Sure, that felt like it was far too short. Sorry, grub config. It can find me other partitions. Weird. Add either putting system. Oh, that's nice. Exit the uh, undo. Let's do that. That fine. All right. Let's see. Did the boot? Did I configure it right? Go, let's do Gen 2. My monitor doesn't seem to want to work right now. Hey, we all we're in, so I can log in this root. Give my password. And we're in and uh, we have to do something important. 
There we go, we have the of course we have the emerge neo fetch. Clear it and do a neo. There we go, worked perfectly fine. No problems whatsoever. There we go, we just need to configure everything else, but that'll be a different video. So if you like the video, like you should like, comment, subscribe. You can follow me at Mastodon and uh, I think that's that'll be it for now. Bye.